we're, we're very lucky that we got five masters because there are several traditional schools of feng shui and usually everybody thinks he's the only one who has the true knowledge and all the other ideas. This was the first time top masters of classical feng shui meet okay, and they discuss techniques and um, the importance of traditional methods of feng shui. It's really hard to not come away thinking, okay, there's a lot more going on when you've seen the world's finest. Unless you've been hiding behind a Buddha, chances are you've heard about feng shui. The entire Western world has been given a basic introductory course to feng shui, but viewers, that's just barely scratching the surface. I'm Karen Clare, and today's entire episode is from Cologne, Germany, and the world's first classical feng shui conference. Enjoy the show. When I started to learn Feng Shui, uh, it was the classical way, only the classical way. And then in the last few years, it became fashion. And with the fashion, a lot of uh, uh, funny, holy people turn up uh, uh, selling their spe very special kind of Feng Shui. And I, uh, I saw there is a reason just to show to the people what really classical Feng Shui is. And that's why I started to think on that invent. Seventeen speakers that are all here at the conference. We have five Chinese masters: Master Yep Cheng Hai, Master Larry Sang from Los Angeles, uh, Master Joseph Yu from Toronto, Canada, Master uh, Eva Wong from Colorado, uh, and uh, Master uh, Raymond Lo from uh, Hong Kong. And beside this, we have uh, uh, 12 practitioners from all over the world, from all the continents, from South Africa, from Australia. They're not so well known yet, but they are very good in what they do, and they can share practical insight of uh, uh, feng shui uh, besides the master, who generally do more the theoretical parts. And we have a very widespread audience, so we have uh, they're kind of all types of, of professions. Maybe 50% uh, of them are more or less in uh, uh, feng shui business, part-time or full-time. Uh, and we have a lot of architects, we have designers and such people who just want to, to learn something they can use in their profession. Uh, maybe a lot of uh, them do not want to work as a consultant, but may do a different work uh, in the profession they already have. We're very lucky that we got five masters because it's not so easy to get five masters. It would not be impossible in China, for example. This is also uh, only impossible if you uh, only, only possible if you go outside of China because uh, there are several traditional schools of feng shui, and usually everybody thinks he's the only one who has the true knowledge and all the other ideas. And for that reason, they usually don't share one table uh, and they don't share uh, one conference. Uh, 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 place. Uh, we were lucky because we started just just in time uh, uh, inviting them uh, when so much uh, uh, reduced of wrong feng shui was spread then they said okay maybe it's important to 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 show up and uh, uh, show what is really feng shui what what's really the deep meaning of it and what are the the mess of it is and uh, Right in that moment, we started to invite them, and then that was our chance to get them all.
I remember when uh, Master Yu and Master Sang met. I was lucky enough to have been at that dinner, and it was a wonderful event. It was the first time that any of us sitting in the room had seen two big masters sitting at the same table talking and not, you know, yelling and throwing food at each other or something. This is very important is I get all the five classical masters together, together. You see every master having and running around the world. We never meet each other, only say hello and bye bye. Huh? So therefore this is the time really five of us sit together, have a ten, I mean all the talking together and all the students come to listen to all the five masters intellectual teaching. This is important. So that let also the people the world know we are very good friends. We are no doubt in different opinions of teaching. Maybe some theory is different, but we don't differentiate, we still are good friends. This is very important. To get all five uh, top masters in the world, authentic Chinese uh, Feng Shui masters together, um, been impossible in the past. And I think it's a miracle that they got together because um, uh, normally you get a lot of um, Mickey Mouse Feng Shui going around and to get the real stuff all in one place at one time is almost impossible. It's important to uh, raise the standards of classical Feng Shui and the awareness of classical Feng Shui to the public. I think that this Feng Shui conference is uh, a marvellous step ahead, certainly in the 21st century, because you're taking a very old art and, and very old thinking processes and we're modernising it by by educating people, by bringing together the old masters and by making them available to the public, people have, have access to ask questions that are important to them. Um, we're not only doing that, we're highlighting fundamental issues that, that are, are critical to the success of, of the whole feng shui industry, but also to retaining the core of the art. So this conference is a, is a wonderful stepping stone for that to happen. And I mean, with people coming in from over 30 countries around the world, yeah, the exposure is great and, and people should go out and spread the right message. This, this conference is really quite unique because it's the first time that uh, there's been a conference just on traditional methods. There's no admixture of black hat sex feng shui or uh, uh, design or interior work and so forth. So it is highly significant. It's the first one and it's got all but uh, two of the major masters which are currently teaching in English. I think it's been good because for a change all the classical people are getting together and we don't have a lot of crap, extraneous crap. None of the, the, a lot of the new age stuff has been pushed to the side so that the authentic material can come forward. Yes, this was the first time a uh, classical feng shui conference where top masters of classical feng shui meet okay, and they discuss techniques and um, the importance of traditional methods of feng shui. This is an unprecedented event. Usually in the past they kind of stuck to themselves and you went and studied with one and then you went and studied with another uh, and they didn't really cross paths. It's only been within the last, I would say, five years that, that people have started to actually get together. And I know that um, Joey and Master Yap had been talking about this for some time, but it's this kind of coherence has been in the works for the last five years. 
I remember when uh, Master Yu and Master Sang met. I was lucky enough to have been at that dinner, and it was a wonderful event. It was the first time that any of us sitting in the room had seen two big masters sitting at the same table, talking and not, you know, yelling and throwing food at each other or something. Um, it, it, this is just a phenomenal event for that. Well, if you're talking about Taiwan, there's a, there are a thousand masters, but um, the number of masters which uh, teach in English or indeed teach Westerners will be limited to about uh, eight. And so there are three major ones uh, that, that aren't at this conference, but you know the, the very well-known ones are all here, which is quite a feat. Uh, Yap Cheng Hai's organization has brought them all together. Um, and it's humming along really nicely, and uh, the audience seems to be really enjoying it, so I, I certainly am. The way I came about Master Yap is through sheer tenacity. Um, after doing a little bit of research on what feng shui was all about and coming up with some very interesting answers as well as a whole lot of questions, I decided to do a couple of courses in South Africa and buy a couple of books, which I think are pretty much your commercial books that are available these days. I had a lot of questions that weren't answered and I realized the only way to really get to the bottom of this, this feng shui industry was to find a master. And Tenacity, luck, fate, call it what you will, landed with Master Yap and I've never looked back. I come from Cork in Ireland, which is Southern Ireland, and I'm a Feng Shui consultant and a Master Practitioner, a Feng Shui graduate of the Yap Shanghai Feng Shui Centre of Excellence. Um, I would, I'm here as part of the contingent of the YCH to represent, as I'm the Irish representative also, to represent Ireland here because there's a very um, there's an increase in awareness in Ireland in feng shui, but I feel we need to um, come to things like this, get people together, get masses together in the in the same room, so we can hear what real classical feng shui is all about. My aim is to be a master. Uh, I don't do things in half measures, uh, hence the fact that I spend hours studying every day. And yes, I do intend to be a master. I work very hard, and hopefully, pretty soon, I'll be a master. I was invited to be here, she introduced feng shui, what's the yin hao it is. So anyhow, yin hao and yang hao, they are totally related together. But because the yin hao is quite a little bit more complicated. So that's why I came over here, try to introduce, you know, I hope everything is included in this conference. I spoke in the conference basically about the, common, uh, the underlying principles of feng shui and the underlying principles of architecture and how the, the two disciplines actually are working towards the same goals. We're trying to achieve the same thing, which is creating harmonious buildings that fulfill function for the people who occupy those buildings. Unfortunately, historically, there's been, there's been quite a, a, a stumbling block, a block of the two disciplines working together cohesively. Architects believe that feng shui practitioners are a bunch of quacks and Feng Shui practitioners don't understand architects because they're these creative people. And yeah, it's, you know, we work towards the same goals and just by understanding a little more of each of the disciplines and showing how similar they are, we should be able to work together very easily. And that was the focus and my intention at the, at the conference. In my talk, I asked two questions in the beginning, whether they come to learn or whether they come to be entertained. Well, I got two yeses. <laughs> wow, really, they got both. Now, before we get back to our arena of masters, here's the FSL question. What is a low pen used for in classical feng shui? To determine degrees of orientation, wind and velocity, or the weather? I'll have the answer for you at the end of the show. What the 
participants got out of this conference is much more than they could find in books out there today. Okay, all the, the top masters in the industry is here, right, are here to give out tips and techniques that are not found in books. And so I think they really got something out of this. I expect uh, uh, them that they get really in contact with what a classical feng shui is. So they um, may come with uh, different ideas, uh, but uh, that's what I the message I want to bring over. What the participants got out of this conference is much more than they could find in books out there today. Okay, all the, the top masters in the industry is here, right, are here to give out tips and techniques that are not found in books. And so I think they really got something out of this. If they're rank beginners, they have had the world's finest in front of them. And it's really hard to not come away thinking, okay, there's a lot more going on when you've seen the world's finest. Uh, of course, at the same time, then you get like the virtuoso syndrome. They make it look really easy. <laughs> um, at, at the same time, if you're, if you're a seasoned practitioner um, or you're in, even at some level in your studies, you come away going, oh, I have so much more to learn. And what was fun for them is, uh, well, to pick on people like me, which they love to do. And, and I don't mind that because it's very sweet and it's meant in a lot of fun. At the same time, they look at each other and go, okay, I have more to learn. Feng Shui is getting so popular globally and a lot of people are very, very interested in Feng Shui. And up until three, four years ago, the actual classical Feng Shui was not available. So this gives people the opportunity to come in and really see what classical Feng Shui is all about and what better way to bring a group of the best masters in the world into one location so you can hear everyone speak and, and have the opportunity to see what classical Feng Shui is. Because the school, our school, the YCH school, is a very um, global network, it's very difficult to get all of us together at the same time. Um, and it's very difficult to get all those masters, those great names and feng shui together and hear everybody speak, to have the opportunity to hear all those lectures. My highlight on that conference uh, is, is Master Eva Wong. That's because she is, on the one side, uh, one of the very few uh, living in the West and having a very profound knowledge of Feng Shui and on the other side you never can get her because she spends her life climbing mountains and canoeing rivers just to research uh, 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 the outer Feng Shui, uh, feng shui in, in her, uh, her surrounding. She usually does not give public talks, she does not give seminars so uh, that we uh, arranged it to have her here and have her, uh, a full day workshop with her. I, that's my special highlight. I'm looking very much forward to this. My highlight, of course, my highlight has to be Grandmaster Yap Cheng Hai's talk, um, as well as uh, I'm very excited to have had the opportunity to listen to Ava Wong talk. Um, especially, I know that she's, she doesn't come out very often to really do public speaking engagements, and it, it's been a great honor to be here and, and being able to, to meet everybody. I particularly like um, Master Ava Wong's talk on landforms. This, this is the real type of um, study of landforms. They call it form school in the new, new books nowadays, but land form feng shui, all right, it's precisely what Master Wong, Wong has described. All the speakers were fantastic. I've studied with Joseph Yu, he's a phenomenal uh, teacher. I've studied with Raymond Lowe, he's world class in uh, four pillars. I've studied with all Master Yap Cheng Hai's uh, stuff. Master Yap Cheng Hai is a legend in his field. Uh, so for the first time, Eva Wong, I haven't had a chance to study with her as she hasn't lectured before. 
and uh, that was great studying with Eva Wong. They were all fantastic. We learned a lot from everyone. Joseph, you did a very professional and slick uh, uh, job, uh, generally in the atmosphere too, and uh, networking and talking to old friends, so uh, you know from previous conferences and so forth, is good. But it's a sort of consolidation. It really marks a new stage in the development of feng shui in the West. Feng shui has taken a long time to get here. I was first involved in 1976, and uh, we are now almost 30 years later. Um, but this is, uh, this is solid progress. I think it's very successful. We have more than 400 participants from 37 uh, uh, countries or from all five continents. So I think it's con uh, successful, yeah. The conference has been wonderful, very enlightening, and I think very beneficial for the whole feng shui industry. This conference was really successful. The turnout was uh, amazing, it was overwhelming. Yes. It's great. The job is doing great. But the uh, feng shui, I think, still have a long way to go. The message that we send out is, despite the differences in our teachings, we are actually united with one same goal, that is to introduce uh, authentic feng shui into the West. And this very first conference proves to be very successful in passing out this message. And everybody is happy. I hope you enjoyed our look at the first classical feng shui conference. Now before I say goodbye, here's the answer to the FSL question. It was, what is a low pen used for in classical feng shui? A low pen is used to determine degrees of orientation. If you want to know about the weather, watch the 6 o'clock news. We'll see you next time. refer to your manual.